Have you ever wondered if there were ancient civilizations that once thrived and flourished, but then vanished, lost to the sands of time? Well, let's dive deep into some of these legendary ancient societies and unearth some truths. The concept of lost continents that once thrived and later submerged beneath the ocean waves has long captivated the human imagination. One of the most fascinating of these legendary lands is Mu. More than just a geographical entity, Mu represents an entire civilization that, according to some, predated many of the ancient cultures we study today. The story of Mu first gained traction in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, primarily through the writings of Augustus Le Plongeon. A British explorer and writer, Le Plongeon believed that he had deciphered ancient Mayan texts, which, according to him, revealed the existence of an ancient continent in the Pacific Ocean. He proposed that this land, which he named Mu, was an ancient civilization where humanity first rose. This civilization, he claimed, was highly advanced, perhaps even the very cradle of all civilizations, influencing cultures as far-reaching as Egypt and Mesoamerica. Mu's description was one of grandeur. Envisioned as a vast continent located in the Pacific Ocean, it stretched from somewhere close to the Hawaiian Islands all the way towards the Philippines and Fiji. It was said to be a place of large cities, vast temples, and advanced knowledge. The society, as described, was not just technologically sophisticated, but spiritually evolved, having a deep understanding of the universe and its workings. James Churchwood, another proponent of the Mu theory, expanded upon Le Plongeon's ideas in the 20th century. Through a series of books, Churchwood described how he deciphered ancient tablets from India and claimed they told the story of Mu. In his interpretation, the continent was home to over 60 million inhabitants and a powerful kingdom before its tragic end. The end of Mu, as the legend goes, was as dramatic as its existence. It's believed that after a catastrophic event, possibly related to volcanic activity or an enormous earthquake, the continent of Mu sank into the depths of the Pacific Ocean, erasing its rich history and advancements. This narrative parallels other legendary lost continents, such as Atlantis, which too is said to have faced a sudden and tragic end. Despite the intriguing tales surrounding Mu, evidence for its existence is largely anecdotal. Mainstream scholars and geologists have found little to no evidence supporting the presence of such a continent in the Pacific. Plate tectonics, our modern understanding of the movement of Earth's lithosphere, doesn't support the idea of a vast continent suddenly sinking into the ocean either. Nestled within the arid landscapes of the American Southwest, the ancestral Puebloans once thrived, creating some of the most captivating and intricate stone settlements North America has ever seen. Their presence, spanning a period from roughly AD 100 to 1300, has left behind architectural and cultural markers that paint a vivid image of their existence. Their habitats stretched across parts of modern-day Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado and Utah. The ancestral Puebloans, previously referred to as the Anasazi, a term now considered outdated and possibly derogatory, were master architects known for their iconic cliff dwellings. These structures, often built within alcoves of massive cliffs, protected them from both adversaries and the elements. One of their most celebrated sites, Mesa Verde in Colorado, is a testament to their architectural prowess. Here you can find multi-storied houses carved straight into cliffs, complete with storage rooms, kivas, which are known as ceremonial chambers, and intricate networks of passageways. Their buildings were not just functional, but also artistically and strategically designed, optimized for factors like sunlight during the winter months. Beyond their cliffside marvels, the ancestral Puebloans were known for their pottery and art. Their pottery, often painted in black and white or adorned in turquoise, was not just functional but held ceremonial and trade significance. They traded these pottery items with neighboring tribes, indicating a vast and interconnected trading network. Agriculture was a vital part of their society. They cultivated beans, squash, and most importantly, corn, which became a central part of their diet. To manage farming in the harsh desert environment, they developed intricate irrigation systems to channel and store the scant rainfall. The ancestral Puebloans also had a rich spiritual life. Their kivas, the round ceremonial chambers, were central to their religious practices. These subterranean structures, often incorporated into their cliff dwellings, were places of worship, community gatherings, and might have served as astronomical observatories, aligning with celestial events. However, despite their evident success in the region, by the end of the 13th century, 
the ancestral Puebloans began to abandon their grand settlement. This departure is one of the great mysteries of archaeology. Various theories attempt to explain it, prolonged droughts that made agriculture unsustainable, internal conflicts or pressures from neighboring tribes. Their descendants, the modern Pueblo peoples, hold oral traditions offering insights into this migration, emphasizing a spiritual journey and a call to seek new beginnings. The remnants of the ancestral Puebloan civilization, their structures, art and pottery, continue to provide invaluable insights into a society that skillfully adapted and thrived in an environment that, to many, would seem unforgiving. Their legacy is not just in the stone and clay they left behind, but in the spirit of innovation, resilience and community. Situated in what is now Pakistan and northwest India, the Indus Valley civilization is a marvel of ancient urban planning, complex societal structures and technological sophistication. Flourishing around 2500 BCE, this ancient culture has left behind tantalizing clues that challenge our understanding of early human societies. At its height, the Indus Valley civilization covered an astonishing 1 million square kilometers, making it one of the largest ancient civilizations, rivaling ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. The cities of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa are the most well-known excavated sites, displaying an advanced level of urban planning that astounds archaeologists to this day. The streets of these cities were laid out in a grid pattern, a sign of sophisticated town planning. Even more impressive were their advanced sewage and drainage systems, superior to those found in many parts of modern India and Pakistan today. Every house had access to fresh water and an efficient waste disposal system, reflecting a keen sense of communal health and sanitation. Beyond the architectural marvels, the Indus people were skilled artisans. They created intricate beadwork, pottery and metalwork, some of which reveal a deep understanding of metallurgical processes. Seals made of soapstone engraved with animals and symbols are among the most iconic artifacts discovered. These seals are believed to have been used in trade and possibly ritualistic or administrative purposes. However, the Indus script found inscribed on these seals and various other artifacts remains one of the most enduring mysteries of the Indus Valley. Despite numerous attempts, this script has never been conclusively deciphered, leaving a vast aspect of their culture, like their beliefs, legends and history, shrouded in mystery. This has led to a wealth of speculation and theories, but without a Rosetta Stone or bilingual text, the script's secrets remain locked away. Trade seemed to be a significant part of the Indus Valley life. Evidence suggests that they had active trade relationships with Mesopotamia, with Indus seals and beads discovered in ancient Mesopotamian cities. The Indus people were known to have used standardized weights and measures, further emphasizing their sophisticated economic system. Yet for all its grandeur and sophistication, the Indus Valley civilization saw a sudden decline around 1900 BCE. The reasons for this decline remain the subject of debate among historians and archaeologists. Some theories point towards a massive climate change event, while others suggest invasions, tectonic activities or even internal social upheaval. The Indus Valley civilization's remains are a testament to the capabilities of ancient societies. While they left behind magnificent cities and artifacts, they also left behind countless mysteries. The enigma of the Indus Valley isn't just about deciphering a script or figuring out why they disappeared. It's about understanding our shared human past and the heights early civilizations could reach. On the southernmost tip of Europe, on the island of Crete, arose a civilization that, for its time, was incredibly advanced and sophisticated. This was the civilization of the Minoans, named after the mythical King Minos, who according to legend maintained a labyrinth home for the terrifying Minotaur. Crete, with its strategic position in the Mediterranean, became a hub for trade, and this geographic advantage allowed the Minoans to establish one of the earliest complex maritime cultures. They traded with Egypt, the Cyclades, the Near East and beyond, bringing in exotic goods and spreading their influence far and wide. The Minoan cities weren't dominated by grand temples or towering ziggurats like in other ancient civilizations. Instead, the most iconic Minoan structures were their palaces, like the famous one in Knossos. These weren't just royal residences. They were multifunctional complexes, housing workshops, shrines and administrative centers. Their design was intricate, featuring complex multi-story layouts, plumbing systems and vibrant frescoes that depicted scenes from daily life, nature and rituals. They painted scenes of youths leaping over bulls, 
women gathering saffron and men and women participating in processions, the emphasis on natural themes and particularly on marine life underscores their connection to the sea. Dolphins, octopuses and various fish species frequently appear in Minoan art, emphasizing the importance of the Mediterranean in their daily lives and culture. Astonishingly, despite their advancements and cultural richness, the Minoans left behind no known military fortifications, suggesting they lived relatively peacefully and relied more on trade and diplomacy. This contrasts with many other ancient civilizations, where city walls and fortresses were common features. Yet, one of the most puzzling aspects of the Minoans is their writing systems. They developed two scripts, Linear A and Linear B. While Linear B was later deciphered in the 20th century and found to be an early form of Greek, Linear A, primarily used for religious and administrative texts, remains undeciphered. What secrets and knowledge it holds is a tantalizing mystery. Around 1450 BCE, the Minoan civilization began to decline. A massive volcanic eruption on the nearby island of Thera, present-day Santorini, sent tsunamis crashing into Crete, devastating its coastal settlements. This natural catastrophe, combined with invasions or internal conflicts, might have led to the Minoans being absorbed or overtaken by the Mycenaeans from mainland Greece. While the Minoans might have disappeared from the annals of history, their influence did not. Elements of their art, architecture and myths were integrated into Greek culture and served as a foundation for what would become classical Greek civilization. Today, the ruins of Knossos and the vibrant frescoes serve as a testament to a people who, at their height, dominated the seas and left an indelible mark on the tapestry of human history. Have you ever gazed at the night sky and wondered if somewhere out there, someone else might be looking back? The vastness of space has always been a source of endless speculation. But today, we're not just reaching for the stars, we're delving deep into our own history. Let's embark on an exploration to unravel a captivating question. Did the Aztecs, one of the most powerful and sophisticated ancient civilizations, have a connection with extraterrestrials? The Aztecs, an ancient civilization flourishing between the 14th and 16th centuries, remain a subject of immense fascination. Their vast empire, characterized by great cities like Tenochtitlan, is a testament to their architectural and societal brilliance. However, beyond admiration for their tangible accomplishments, the mystery surrounding the origins of their knowledge has given rise to numerous speculations. One element fueling these speculations is the speed with which the Aztecs seemed to progress. In a relatively short time, they developed complex societal structures, architectural wonders, and advanced systems of agriculture, trade, and astronomy. Given the limited technological means available during their era, this rapid advancement has often baffled historians and scholars. Yet it's not just the speed of their progress that's intriguing, it's the magnitude. The Aztecs, for instance, had a calendar system that rivaled, if not surpassed, those of contemporary civilizations. Their understanding of the cosmos was incredibly sophisticated, leading some to wonder how they achieved such insights without the aid of modern telescopes and tools. This intersection of rapid progress and the depth of their knowledge often brings up a tantalizing question. Did they have a source of information unknown to us? While some believe that they might have drawn from lost civilizations or ancient cultures, Others have ventured further out, suggesting an extraterrestrial influence. Tool to this fire are the intricate carvings and drawings discovered in Aztec ruins. Some depict figures that, to the modern eye, bear an uncanny resemblance to what we'd describe as astronauts or unidentified flying objects. These artifacts, while open to interpretation, have provided ample material for those searching for evidence of ancient alien contact. Finally, the very narratives of the Aztecs play into this theory. Their legends and religious beliefs are peppered with references to the stars, heavenly beings, and events that occurred in the sky. For those inclined to speculate, these tales hint at a connection, not just spiritual but perhaps even physical, between the Aztecs and beings from the cosmos. The Aztecs, among many ancient civilizations, had a profound respect for the heavens. Their daily lives, rituals, and even their majestic structures were intricately intertwined with celestial movements. This entwinement was not a mere fascination. It was an understanding so deep that it often leaves one pondering, how did they achieve this without our modern tools and knowledge? One of the most notable aspects of Aztec civilization is their architectural wonders. At the heart of their capital, Tenochtitlan, stood the Templomea, 
a colossal double pyramid dedicated to the gods of war and rain. But this was not just an ornamental or religious structure, it was a marvel of astronomical precision. The temple was meticulously aligned with specific celestial bodies and events. During certain times of the year, the sun would rise or set, aligning perfectly with the temple's stairs, creating a visual spectacle that symbolized the descent or ascent of their deities. These alignments were not coincidental. They showcased the Aztecs' intricate knowledge of the solar year and the equinoxes. Furthermore, other structures around the city, and indeed across the Aztec Empire, were positioned concerning specific stars, constellations, and planetary movements. This suggests a systematic and comprehensive understanding of the sky. But why? For the Aztecs, the heavens weren't just a vast expanse above, they were a mirror to their world below. By aligning their buildings with the heavens, they believed they could draw down the power and favor of the gods. Beyond architecture, the very layout of their cities and ceremonial ball courts also demonstrated this celestial connection. These areas were designed to mirror the Milky Way, certain constellations, and other celestial phenomena, turning their cities into a reflection of the universe. The precision with which the Aztecs achieved these alignments is nothing short of remarkable. Without the telescopic technology we possess today, they relied on naked eye observations and perhaps sophisticated tools made of materials like obsidian and quartz. The depth of their understanding has led some to suggest that perhaps this knowledge was not entirely of terrestrial origin. Could it be that the Aztecs had guidance from a more advanced civilization, maybe even extraterrestrial? While there's no concrete evidence to confirm such theories, the mere existence of their awe-inspiring sky-aligned architecture keeps the door of speculation wide open. The Aztecs held a rich tapestry of gods and deities that governed various aspects of their world, many of which had clear associations with celestial objects and phenomena. These connections between the gods and the skies were not just symbolic, but were fundamental to Aztec beliefs and rituals, raising questions about their origin and the profound nature of these associations. One of the most revered gods in the Aztec pantheon was Huitzilopochtli, the sun god and god of war. Depicted as a hummingbird or an eagle, he was believed to be in a constant battle, fighting against the darkness to ensure the sun's rebirth every morning. The daily journey of the sun was seen as a mirror to Huitzilopochtli's struggle, a cosmic play where the sun's setting was a temporary defeat, only to rise again triumphant. The sun, the most visible and significant celestial body, was not just a glowing disk in the sky for the Aztecs, it was the embodiment of a god, a deity that battled daily for them. Similarly, the moon god Tequistacatl had his own tail, often depicted as an older deity who carries a large white shell symbolizing the lunar glow. In certain Aztec myths, it was believed that Tequistacatl attempted to become the sun but was unsuccessful, resigning him to his cooler, dimmer state as the moon. Then there were the Tzitzimime, celestial deities associated with stars. They were believed to be the protectors of the heavens, often portrayed as skeletal figures that could descend to earth during solar eclipses, symbolizing the temporary chaos in the heavens. These beings, while terrifying, were essential in maintaining the cosmic balance. The centrality of these celestial gods in Aztec myths and daily life points to an intense focus on the skies. Rituals, sacrifices, and ceremonies were meticulously planned around celestial events. Given the detailed stories and characteristics attributed to these gods, one cannot help but wonder, were these narratives born solely from human imagination and observation? Or might they have been influenced by encounters or teachings from beings beyond our world? Some suggest that the detailed and profound connections between the gods and celestial bodies might hint at ancient encounters with beings from the skies, possibly extraterrestrials. While this remains a theory without definitive evidence, the intricate relationship the Aztecs held with their gods from the heavens continues to captivate our imagination and fuel such intriguing speculations. The Aztecs, like many ancient civilizations, have left behind a legacy of artifacts and records that still surprise and intrigue researchers today. Among the vast array of their cultural and scientific accomplishments, there are a few that stand out and make us question the sources of their knowledge. Could it be possible that some of this knowledge came from a source not of this earth? One of the first pieces of evidence that jumps out is the Aztec calendar, also known as the Sunstone. This massive, intricately carved stone, weighing around 25 tons, displays a comprehensive understanding of time and astronomy. 
It not only recorded days, months, and cosmic cycles, but also depicted various gods and mythological creatures, suggesting a link between celestial phenomena and their deities. The precision with which the Aztecs could predict solar and lunar eclipses, the Venus cycle, and other celestial events is astonishing. Their ability to track and record these cycles with such accuracy without the aid of telescopic equipment is still a topic of research and debate. Then, there's the matter of their architectural prowess. The city of Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire, was an engineering marvel of its time. Floating gardens, aqueducts, and a complex grid system of canals showcased a knowledge of civil engineering and urban planning that was highly advanced for its era. The temples and pyramids of the city aligned with specific celestial bodies stood as testaments to the Aztec's advanced knowledge in both architecture and astronomy. The ceremonial mask of Xutacutli, the god of fire, offers another clue. Made of turquoise mosaics, the mask showcases a detailed knowledge of lapidary work. The precision in which each tiny piece of turquoise was shaped and assembled is a testament to their advanced craftsmanship. How the Aztecs acquired such detailed knowledge in various fields, from metallurgy to gem crafting, remains an intriguing question. Moreover, in Aztec mythology, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god, is described as a wise teacher who brought knowledge of agriculture, metallurgy, and the arts to the Aztecs. Depictions of this deity, often shown as a snake with feathers or even in more humanoid forms with elaborate headgear, have led some to speculate about extraterrestrial connections. Could Quetzalcoatl's descriptions be an ancient interpretation of a visitor from another world, one who brought new knowledge and technologies to the Aztecs? While definitive evidence linking the Aztecs to extraterrestrial beings is elusive, the civilization's advanced artifacts and knowledge continue to fuel such theories. The precision of their calendars, the sophistication of their architecture, and the intricate details of their artwork all pose questions about the origins of their advanced understanding. Were these accomplishments the result of human ingenuity alone, or might there have been some otherworldly influence? The debate rages on, but one thing is for sure. The legacy of the Aztecs continues to captivate and inspire wonder in all who delve into their mysteries. The Aztecs, residing in what is today central Mexico, were not only masterful engineers and fierce warriors, but also exceptional astronomers and storytellers. Their relationship with the heavens was not a mere fascination. It was an integral part of their daily life, religion, and identity. As the night sky unfolded above them, the Aztecs saw not just stars, but tales of gods, creation, and the cosmic dance of time and destiny. Central to Aztec astronomy was the observance of celestial bodies, especially the movement of the Sun, Moon, and Venus. Venus, particularly, was of paramount importance. The Aztecs called it the morning and evening star. Its cycles, both as the morning star and the evening star, were meticulously recorded, and its appearances and disappearances were used to time certain ritual events and ceremonies. This emphasis on Venus is not entirely surprising, given that its brightness is surpassed only by the sun and the moon in the night sky. However, more than just tracking celestial bodies, the Aztecs wove intricate myths around them. The Milky Way, for instance, was seen as the pathway of the dead, a shimmering road that souls traveled on their journey to the afterlife. This luminescent band across the night sky was not just a collection of stars to the Aztecs, it was a spiritual guide, a beacon for those who had passed on. And as always, I hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.